Well, here it is. The Winex Tactical Admin Molly Pouch. And as you can see, that uh, fully loaded, still rides very comfortable. Um, I've got the strap set up so that it uh, supports the weight and it holds it pretty nice. Now you'll see that it already came with these D-rings on the top. I just added some D-rings on the side to the uh, Molly straps in the back. Um, this is just some one inch uh, nylon webbing and a couple tri-glides and a single buckle that I stole off of an old backpack. However, uh, this was less than $13. Uh, the webbing that I got, I could make four of these with, and it was $12, so I guess it's $3 with the webbing. And you could buy all these tri-glides and this buckle for probably uh, $2. I got a bulk pack of tri-glides and uh, buckles because I do a lot of these projects. And at that price, it's about a buck, maybe two bucks. So uh, we're probably looking at uh, conservatively $18. Um, my cost was about 17 So um, anyway, very, very handy. All right, now I'll give you a quick look at what I'm able to fit inside this thing. So once you open it up, uh, like a lot of the bags, it has a cord, uh, which allows you to adjust how it sits so you can kind of create a little table. Uh, what I'll normally keep in here is I'll keep a uh, map right here. Uh, the compass will either be right on top or around my neck. Um, it's got this panel on this side, which I will keep. In this case, I've got my first aid kit, a fire steel, and a poop pack. On this panel right here on the front, I've got some DEET, uh, an extra pencil. I've got some zip ties, which come in handy if uh, you have a pack failure. I've got a really, really cheap $1 uh, blade from uh, Home Depot, mainly for cutting cordage. Uh, an extra pencil that's uh, wrapped in Luco tape for blisters. And some sunblock. And there's a zippered pouch right up front. And in that zippered pouch, I will keep generally my uh, UTM uh, grid coordinate tool, which comes in handy uh, if you're using paper maps, and a ditty bag, which has in it a space blanket, some uh, fire starter, dental floss, and some extra batteries for my headlamp. So what I'm sure everybody wants to know is, does this bag have the ability, like the Hill People gear bag, to be able to comfortably conceal a weapon while you're wearing the bag? Uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, behind this panel, which has uh, these items on it, there's an open pocket, which is plenty large enough in order to be able to carry a weapon. Now, I will say that because uh, this is not in a holster, uh, even though there is a safety on this weapon, uh, I am not carrying it with a round in the chamber. And that's just for safety reasons. All right, let me go ahead and grab a seat. We'll take this thing off and I'll show you some of the uh, specifications uh, that went into uh, the proportions on this, just in case you decide you might want to build one. All right, so here's the bag. Uh, as you can see, it's actually a uh, pretty good size. Uh, it already had these D-rings on top, and on the back side, I just had to add uh, a D-ring here, and on this side, uh, just run it through the Molly webbing. It also has this Velcro uh, strap, which is designed to kind of go around and attach to the Velcro right here. And the idea, I guess, is if you have that on, when you unzip it, it prevents the zipper from coming all the way down. Um, I didn't really like that, but I didn't want to commit to cutting it off, so I just tucked those uh, inside the, the webbing. So these D-rings, as well as all the hardware, I just stole off of an old backpack, but you can get all these uh, pretty cheap. I mean, the D-rings, uh, you probably get them in, a, in a, a couple for a dollar. Same thing with the tri-glides. 
And I did this because I didn't want to have a bunch of quick releases and buckles and hardware that would just make it more cumbersome, uh, especially underneath uh, a large backpack. So all I did was design first the uh, back panel. Back panel is uh, eight inches across and seven inches tall. And this is just uh, like a laundry bag material that you can get at Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics. And I edged it with three eighths inch uh, nylon uh, grow grain. And this is one inch uh, mill spec webbing. And I got a 30 foot roll for $12. And I could do four of these harnesses for that. So the straps on the shoulder, as well as the left side are 21 inches long. And a strap on the buckle side is 15 inches. And then I just used a small scrap to sew a loop to attach uh, the buckle to that D-ring. Uh, like I said, I used just a little bit of Velcro. Uh, try to ignore my <laughs> ignore my stitching. Um, it's it's uh, I am a functional sewer at best, uh, but I'm not trying to win any awards. Um, it's uh, definitely strong. Uh, the more you do it, I guess, the better I'll get. So anyway, so it came up, I think, pretty nice. Um, at this point, I've got about 27 ounces with the bag and the contents that are in it. Um, and that's minus uh, a weapon. So the weapon itself is 30 ounces or so. It'd be more if I had an extra magazine. So as it sits right now, with everything in it, it is a couple ounces shy of four pounds. Uh, very, very comfortable to carry, um, very handy to be able to access as you're hiking, uh, to be able to get things out of it. Uh, I can leave my pack on, and when I get to camp, I can take my pack off and still have access to all these things right at my fingertips. Hey, if there's anything that I didn't cover in the video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'll try to get back with you. Um, if you like this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more things like this, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.